I've been trying to use my mobile phone as a monitor and every solution I come across, there always seems to be some kind of problem until now. Let's take a look. And this is it. The Axiom M1, which converts the HDMI signal from your camera to a USB, turning your mobile phone into a monitor, recorder, and for live streaming. This is all you get in the box, the cable and the HDMI converter. It simply works by the HDMI cable from your camera going in here and the USB-C coming out here into your mobile phone. And we'll put that together shortly to show you how that works. So you will need to buy, if you don't already have it, an HDMI to HDMI cable. The Sony R7 V has the full size HDMI and that also has the full size HDMI on the M1. And then of course a way of um, mounting it to your camera and a mobile phone. You can either power this with a battery so it'll keep your phone powered uh, all day long or you can put an AC power supply into here, which it doesn't come with. It will work without the power supply, so you don't need to have an external battery. You can fit the NPF batteries on the back. I've only got some large ones here, and they just click into place, and that just slides across. It all seems rather sturdy. It is made of plastic, but it seems quite a high quality plastic, quite solid. Um, quite nicely made. I've seen other reviews and they're like, oh, it's a bit plastic, it's not metal. But then it's going to be heavier as well and half the point of this solution is to have a nice light mobile kit. So I'm okay with that. And then on the other side here, you've got the USB-C out and then you've got an on-off switch there, which is, if it's switched on, it will be sending power to your mobile phone and then it's got the battery indicators there. But as I say, it will work without being powered, but it will take power from your mobile device. I've been looking for something like this because I wanted to be able to use my mobile phone. I mean, you've got a high quality screen, internal recording, you've always got it on you. So it seems sensible that you could be able to use this as a monitor. Also, I like to travel light. Often I want to use my motorbike, I want to shoot into town, take everything in a rucksack and still be able to produce high quality video content. Also, I was looking for a device where I could be doing screen recordings and record the menu of a camera for tutorials and things like that, which this will do. It'll also record your video input as well. So it'll go straight to your phone, which of course, if you want to post onto social media, you can do that. Just a thing to note though, that might be recording in 4K, but this will only um, take 1080p. So if you're recording onto this device, it will only be 1080. The other problem I found with uncabled solutions is that there's a latency. It's very handy, I'll still use these like Monitor Plus app, because if I want to be away from my camera and still control the settings, then I can do that and I can still set up my shot and everything or control a second camera using that app. And I think that's fantastic, but there is definitely a latency and there's many things you can't do that you would with a professional monitor, uh, which this will let you do. This setup is for Android phones. They do a different device for an Apple phone. So you would also download a different app. So the first thing you need to do for an Android, go to the Play Store and download the Axune app. So we're just going to go to our App Store and if you look up Axune M1 and you'll see it, Axune C, click on that and download the app. Obviously I've already got it downloaded and when you load this onto your phone, it'll ask for different permissions to access the camera, etc. Just say yes, yes, yes to all those. One thing is for me, it did ask permission for when it was connected to a USB-C cable that it would automatically open the app and I said no. And then I was having trouble setting this up and I went back and I said yes to that and it launches fantastically every time now. You get tutorial and the manual and everything by tapping the top three lines at the top. To go into the app, you click monitor and up comes the monitor screen. Now we'll just set this all up and you can see this in action. 
So I recommend getting a decent clamp. I've got a small rig here and this connects onto a hot cold shoe or you might want it to connect to a thread. You get different types, um, but this one also has the pin on the top as the mount here also has little sockets for the pin and it has one quarter inch thread on this. And I'll connect the HDMI cable here. And I particularly chose this phone because it's a 4K screen, so it's going to give me crystal clear image. And now we can just turn our camera on. And straight away we've got the screen. I believe the app only works on phones from 2019 onwards, so if you've got an older phone, just bear in mind that it probably won't work. Now, a couple of settings that you need to know about uh, for the HDMI. If I go to the menu, at the moment you can see I've got the menu coming up and the screen at the back here is not showing either. So I can make any changes there. I've actually put them in my shortcut menu um, under HDMI info display. But if you need to know it's in the suitcase at the bottom and if you go right the way down external output so you drop down another screen and it's external output um, HDMI resolution you want that set to auto because let's say I'm in 4k on the camera and even though my mobile phone screen is 4k the device the M1 device is only able to process a 1080p so if you um, don't have that on auto it just won't work so if you're finding that problem you need to check that either set the output onto 1080p or just have it on auto and HDMI info display I'll turn that off in a second the reason you might want it on is like now I can be recording the screen here and that's now recording everything I'm doing on this screen external output second to last and have it on auto or change it physically there to 1080. Also to the HDMI info display. Now, if I turn that to off, we will lose the menu on screen. And we will now have this display on the camera as well, showing, which is rather good. So now we've got both working and the screen is recording to the HDMI display on. You'll notice I'll get my focus points as well, very much like the uh, Ninjas, Ninja Atmos would be doing. We can now just look at any latency on this and you can see on both screens, they're happening in real time with each other. One, two, three, four, five. Of course, you've still got all your pinch to zoom functions like that which I can't do on the camera here and so if I was to put it into manual mode as you can see I'm losing focus there I could zoom in and check focus now I haven't actually got the peaking on at the moment but if I was to put the peaking on then of course I can make sure I've got my focus nice and sharp. So now, just to go around the screen, let's have a look at what we've got here. But that'll take you back to the main menu where you can see the manual, etc. If you touch this little arrow at the bottom here, this brings up um, the settings for all these functions along the bottom. And essentially, this will be turning black and white. They're greyed out until you touch them and then they'll be coloured at the bottom. Now you can tap on these and it will bring up more detailed um, adjustments that you can make. So for example, we've got this set here. This is the histogram and we can have it at different places. So we have bottom left and you can drag a slider and have that showing more faded in or not. You have it in Luma. So you can really make it how you want it. If I touch on the outside, it goes, comes back up, and then I can look at um, my waveforms here. And if I touch this again, you can see it comes up here, and then I can look at different um, 
adjustments along here where you want it positioned. And this is where you can load different LUTs. So if I was filming in S-Log3 and I wanted to preload a LUT into here so I can see what the final look would be like, you can put that in here. Zebras, false colors. Here you can change your aspect ratios. You can squeeze for anamorphic lenses. Kind of crazy. And I like this, you've got audio settings here as well. And now I've got grid lines all the options here and hide some of these options if you hit this plus button here then you get all the options that come up here and there's a little screen and you can add or remove these and turn them on and off from there and you can change your bit rate there for live streaming tutorial gives you more little video information. So I think this is absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited about using this in the field and I'm looking forward to creating some more videos on this. So I can show you how it's been working for me and give you some feedback. But I think for 88 pounds, 88 dollars, it's a real steal. It won't quite do what Ninja will do. It won't record 4K, 8K onto the device and uh, won't work with different codecs that you might need for professional filmmaking. But I think to have the ability to just run and gun and to be able to frame up your shots, make sure the exposure is good, the pin sharp, the images, you can zoom in and check focus on a lovely big screen like this. I think it's an absolute win for the money. So I thoroughly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you got value out of that. And if you've got any knowledge to share, please put it in the comments below and any questions, let us know and we'll try and answer them. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.